In this video, we're going to take a look at the first lab on NoSQL injection from Portsfigure's Web Security Academy. The lab is called Detecting NoSQL Injection. As usual, I'll start by going through the background information that's specific to this lab, but if you've already done that in your own time or you just want to skip to the practical lab, you can go to the relevant chapter in the video. NoSQL injection is a vulnerability where an attacker is able to interfere with queries that an application makes to a NoSQL database. NoSQL injection may enable an attacker to bypass authentication or protection mechanisms, extract or edit data, cause a denial of service, or execute code on the server. NoSQL databases store and retrieve data in a format other than traditional SQL relational tables. They use a wide variety of query languages instead of a universal standard like SQL, and they have fewer relational constraints. A little more about NoSQL databases. They store and retrieve data in a format other than traditional SQL relational tables and are designed to handle large volumes of unstructured or semi-structured data. As such, they typically have fewer relational constraints and consistency checks than SQL and claim significant benefits in terms of scalability, flexibility, and performance. Like SQL databases, users interact with data in NoSQL databases using queries that are passed by the application to the database. However, Different NoSQL databases use a wide range of query languages instead of a universal standard like the Structured Query Language or SQL, and this may be a custom query language or a common language like XML or JSON. There is a wide variety of NoSQL databases. In order to detect vulnerabilities, it helps to understand the model framework and the language. Some common types of NoSQL databases include document stores, which store data in flexible, semi-structured documents, and they typically use formats like JSON, BSON and XML, and are queried with an API or query language. Some examples include MongoDB and Couchbase. We also have key value stores. These store data in a key value format. Each data field is associated with a unique key string, and values are retrieved based on the unique key. Some examples include Redis and Amazon DynamoDB. We also have wide column stores, which organize related data into flexible column families rather than traditional rows. Examples include Apache's Cassandra and Apache's HBase. We also have graph databases, which use nodes to store data entities and edges to store relationships between entities. Examples include Neo4j and Amazon Neptune. There are two different types of NoSQL injection. We have syntax injection, which occurs when you break the NoSQL query syntax, enabling you to inject your own payload. The methodology is similar to that used in SQL injection, however, the nature of the attack varies significantly as NoSQL databases use a range of query languages, types of syntax, and different data structures. We also have operator injection, and this occurs when you use a NoSQL query operator to manipulate queries. In this topic, we'll look at how to test for NoSQL vulnerabilities in general, and then focus on exploiting vulnerabilities in MongoDB, which is the most popular NoSQL database. There'll also be some labs that we can practice what we're learning. You can potentially detect NoSQL injection vulnerabilities by attempting to break the query syntax. To do this, systematically test each input by submitting fuzz strings and special characters that trigger a database error or some other detectable behavior if they're not adequately sanitized or filtered by the application. If you know the API language of the target database, use special characters and fuzz strings that are relevant to that language. Otherwise, use a variety of fuzz strings to target multiple API languages. Consider a shopping application that displays products in different categories. When a user selects the fizzy drinks category, their browser requests the following URL. This causes the application to send a JSON query to retrieve relevant products from the product collection in the Mongo database. To test whether the input may be vulnerable, submit a string in the value of the category parameter. And we have some examples here for MongoDB. We can actually add these together to construct the following attack, making sure that we've got that URL encoded, and if this causes a change from the original response, it might indicate that the user input isn't filtered or sanitized correctly. Note that NoSQL injection vulnerabilities can occur in a variety of contexts, and you need to adapt your fuzz strings accordingly. Otherwise, you may simply trigger validation errors that mean the application never executes your query. In this example, we're injecting the fuzz string via the URL, so the string is URL encoded. In some applications, you may need to inject your payload via a JSON property instead, and in this case, we would change the payload to the one that we have on screen. To determine which characters are interpreted as syntax by the application, you can inject individual characters. So for example, you could submit an apostrophe, which results in the following MongoDB query, 
And if this causes a change from the original response, it might indicate that the apostrophe character has broken the query syntax and caused a syntax error. You can confirm this again by submitting a valid query string in the input, for example, by escaping the quote. If this doesn't cause a syntax error, it might mean that the application is vulnerable to an injection attack. After detecting the vulnerability, the next step is to determine whether you can influence Boolean conditions using the NoSQL syntax. To test this, we'll send two requests, one with a false condition and one with a true condition. For example, you could use conditional statements like this on screen, where we're basically saying AND0 or we say AND1, depending on whether we want false or true. So we send both of those queries, and if the application behaves differently for each one, it'll suggest that the false condition is impacting the query logic, but the true condition doesn't. This indicates that injecting this style of syntax impacts a server-side query. Now that we've identified that we can influence Boolean conditions, we can attempt to override existing conditions to exploit a vulnerability. For example, you could inject a JavaScript condition that always evaluates true, such as the one on screen, and this will affect the MongoDB query in the following way. So the injected condition is always true, and it doesn't specifically look for the fizzy products, it should return all products from all categories, including those that are hidden or unknown. Warning, we should take care when injecting a condition that always evaluates true into a NoSQL query. Although it may be harmless in the initial context you're injecting into, it's common for applications to use data from a single request in multiple different queries. If an application uses it when updating or deleting data, this could result in accidental data loss. Okay, with the background stuff out of the way, let's take a look at the lab. The description says, the product category filter for this lab is powered by a MongoDB NoSQL database. It is vulnerable to NoSQL injection. To solve the lab, perform a NoSQL injection attack that causes the application to display unreleased products. Okay, so we get through to the homepage. We see immediately we have the search option. So if I select, for example, food and drink, we now have slash filter, and then the category is food and drink at the top of the page. Let me go back to the background information we were looking at. There was a string that we could copy and paste. Remember we had these? We could try them one by one, but we also had the URL encoded version here in the example. So I'm going to take that, and let's go. We'll replace the category altogether. Hit enter, and this time we get an error saying that there was an unterminated string literal. Okay, so we have triggered the error that we wanted to see. The next thing was to try and work out which characters were processed, and one of the examples here was the apostrophe. So let's do exactly that. Let's just try and change this to apostrophe. We still get the same error. Now, what if we escape the apostrophe to make it a valid syntax? There we go. We no longer get the error. So that has confirmed that for us. Now we want to see what we can do to actually test the conditional behavior. So we had this example, which was this will be a false query. So let me go to burp and I'll just go to hackverter, paste this in. We can do URL encode. I'll take a copy of it and let me select food or drink again. We want to have the category in here already so we can see the difference. I'll paste that in. So that is false and it comes back with zero results. So what if we change the zero now to a one? Now it comes back with the results. So we've confirmed that our injection is affecting the conditional logic of the query. Let's go back and see what the last thing was. It was to override existing conditions. So we want to return all of the items, even the ones that aren't listed in one of these filters. So we can take this query, this will say if one equals one, so if true equals true, which it always does, and it should bring back everything. Looks like we probably need to URL encode it as well, so I'll just take a copy of this here. And it already has the category in it. Let me, let's try it without the category. And it did bring back everything, but it's not telling me that the lab is solved for some reason. Let me try it again with the category. And now the lab is solved, okay. Um, I think the output was the same there. You can see it's brought back some things that probably shouldn't be here. There is a paddling pool shoes, hologram stand-in, things that I don't remember seeing on the main page. Anyway, that is how we can exploit the NoSQL injection vulnerability. That was the first lab out of four. So in the next, in the next video, we will take a look at exploiting NoSQL operator injection to bypass authentication. Anyway, as usual, let me just recommend that you sign up to the Integrity platform if you want to find some NoSQL injection vulnerabilities and get paid for it. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.